In today's lecture, we will discuss Hounsky hierarchy. Already we have seen a few class of languages, regular language, convex field language and recursive language and then recursively enumerable language. We have character, characterized all these class of languages grammatically and also using automata. We have found that regular language is a proper subset of convex field language because every regular language can be generated by using some convex field grammar, but there is a language like say a to the power n, b to the n and greater than equal to 0, which is not regular that we have already proved, but this is a convex field language. Similarly, every convex field language is recursively enumerable language, because every convex field language can be generated by using some unstructured grammar and it is accepted by some Turing machine. But there is a language a to the n, b to the n, c to the n, which is recursively enumerable, but not convex field. So, that way regular language is properly contained within convex field language, convex field language is properly contained within recursively enumerable language. And then we will introduce some more class in between, which is called context sensitive language. And these four classes, these four classes of languages are said to be Chomsky hierarchy is named after the famous linguist Noam Chomsky, who proposed these languages as natural model for natural languages. So, this containment we can show that regular language is properly contained within convex language, convex language is properly contained within recursively enumerated language. And we have introduced that regular right linear grammar generates regular language that means, regular language generated gener by regular grammar and finite automata accepts regular language and finite automata and regular grammar these are equivalent that we have already shown. Similarly, two zone automata and convex field grammar they are equivalent. So, PDA accepts convex field language and a convex field grammar generates a convex field language. Similarly, a Turing machine accepts recursively enumerable language and similarly, a recursively language, enumerable language is generated by an unrestricted grammar or structured grammar the same thing. Now, let us recall the definition of structured grammar. A structured grammar is a quadruple n t p s, where n is a finite set of non terminal symbols, t is a finite set of terminal symbols, and s, which is a non terminal, is called the start, start symbol, and p is a finite subset of v n v star n v star cross v star, where v is basically union of non terminal terminals is called a set of production rules. That means, production rules is written basically by this notation alpha goes to beta, where alpha is from this v star and v star and beta is from v star. That means, beta may be epsilon, but the left hand side alpha must contain at least one non terminal symbol. Now, if left hand side of each production is a non terminal simply, then we say that the grammar is a CFG. So, this structured grammar is said to be CFG if the left hand side is a single non terminal symbol. In addition, if the right hand side of each production rule is a terminal string followed by at most one non terminal symbol, then the grammar is said to be a regular grammar. So, based on this, we can have a classification of grammar. So, alpha goes to beta if there is no restriction other than 
the rule that we have already given is said to be a type 0 grammar. If we keep on imposing some restriction on both sides, then we get some other kind of grammar. If length of alpha left hand side is less than or equal to the length of the right hand side, then we say that this grammar is a type 1 grammar. And if the left hand side is single non terminal, it is called type 2 grammar or context free grammar. If besides this, if the right hand side beta is either a sequence of terminal symbols or a sequence of terminal symbols followed by a non terminal, then we say that it is type 3 grammar. So, already we know that the type 3, type 3 grammar generates regular language. Type 2 grammar generates context free language, type 1 type 0 grammar generates recursively enumerable language, but we did not mention so far this type 1 grammar. We will see that the type 1 grammar is nothing but it is called context sensitive grammar and it generates context sensitive language, context sensitive language. So, we will first introduce this context sensitive language, we will characterize this context sensitive language and then we will show that context sensitive language is properly contained within this recursively enumerable language. In fact, recursive language and there is at least one context language which is not context free. So, this shows the proper containment of CSL within recursive language and CFL is within context sensitive language. Just consider an example of context sensitive language. Say, this is a language L equal to equal number of A's followed by number of A's followed by same number of B's followed by same number of C's where n is greater than equal to 1. That means, L equal to A to the n, B to the n, C to the n and greater than equal to 1. Now, we can generate this grammar using generate this language using the following production rules. There is a set of production rules where the first one says uh, S goes to A B C, S is a start symbol or A X B C, X is a non terminal, X goes to A X B capital C, capital C non terminal or A B capital C, then C B goes to B C and C C goes to C C. Now, we can show that this grammar can generate this language. We know that this language is not a CFL, but this production rule set of production rules which follows the restriction imposed by this context free language in no production rule the left hand side length of left hand side is more than the length of right hand side. It is at most equal at this point C B equal goes to B C, but in other cases it is less than the length of the right hand side. So, it is basically the type 1 grammar which is a context sensitive grammar it is context sensitive grammar. Now, therefore, this set of non terminals is S x c and set of terminal symbol is a b c. So, it is quite clear that this is a context sensitive grammar C S G. Just have a look at how can derive the strings of the form a to the n, b to the n, c to the n for some n greater than equal to 1. So, if n equal to 1, we simply generate use a first rule s goes to a b c to get a b c. If n equal to we first use the second rule for s that means, s goes to a x b c and then this x will be terminated by one of this, we can terminate by one of this. If we keep on continuing with termin using this one, we will keep on <coughs> generating more and more as, B, as and B and C's and whenever we use this one, we stop there generating any more as. And once we use this products on as goes to A B capital C, then we keep on shifting the B which is there, there towards the right hand side 
will keep on shifting towards the left hand side. So, that all B's appear immediately after the group of A's and eventually all capital C's will go towards the towards the end extreme end and eventually all capital C's using this kind of rule capital C goes to C capital C C goes to C C small c c. We can use or we can have we can convert all capital C's to small c's. So, that is what we have done for n equal to a x b c. So, this x is replaced by a x a b capital C. Now, using the rule c b goes to b c, we have shifted this b towards the left hand side by one symbol and we have got this string and eventually capital C c goes to small c c we have used the last step to get the c's. Similarly, if you keep on continuing to use the production x goes to a x b c, then we will have this kind of derivation as derives a x b c then replace this x by a x b c keep on continuing to replace this x by a x b c then after number of steps we will have this kind of string a to the power k minus 1 a b c b c to the power k minus 2 then b c and eventually shifting this b in the extreme right towards the left hand side by using the rule C b goes to B c B capital C. Number of times we can shift all the b's towards the left hand side getting a power k b power k and then k numbers of k minus 1 num numbers of capital C and small 1 small c at the extreme end and eventually using the rule capital C c small c goes to small c small c k numbers of steps k numbers of times we will eventually get the string a to power k b to power k c to power k. So, this grammar generates the language a to the n b to the n c to the n. So, this is an example of context free grammar. We will introduce a kind of automata called linear bounded automata and we will show that the linear bounded automata accepts context free languages. Now, a linear bounded automaton is a non deterministic Turing machine satisfying the following conditions. The first one is that it is input alphabet includes two special symbols one is left angular bracket and the other is right angular bracket. The left and right these are the left and right end markers respectively and the LBA has no moves, no more moves left from the left end marker and or right from the right towards the right end marker. Nor it may print another symbol over left end marker or right end marker. That means, left end marker and right end marker cannot be erased or can be replaced by any other symbol and the head read write head cannot move left towards the left hand marker and right towards the right hand marker. Now, consider an linear bounded a linear bounded automata automaton M where Q is a set of states input alphabet transition moves and Q 0 is the star state. Say this is an LBA linear bounded automaton. The language accepted by this linear bounded automaton M is a set of all strings W over sigma other than what which does not contain left end marker, right end marker, or the hash symbol, such that it starts with this configuration initially. That means, it starts with the start symbol q naught, the input w is placed between the left end marker and the right end marker and the head read, read head is reading the 
write end marker initially. Eventually, from this, if it moves to this configuration where it enters in a state to is a halting state, and in that case, that con may be anything, it may be may have any content within this left angular bracket and right angular bracket alpha beta any strings over string of terminals or any, any non terminals, then it is reading some symbol A. Since it has eventually entered the whole state, therefore, this string will be W will be accepted. We will now show that the LBA linear modern automaton automata and context sensitive grammars are equivalent and this equivalence is shown as follows. Given a CSGG context free grammar context sensitive grammar G, there is an L B A linear bound automaton A such that L G equal to L M. Similarly, given an linear bound automaton M, there is a CSG G such that L G equal to L M minus epsilon. So, here since the L B A might accept epsilon, but since in a CSG the left hand side of the grammar is less than length of left hand side of the grammar is less than or equal to the right hand side. So, therefore, this context sensitive grammar cannot generate epsilon. So, epsilon cannot be generated by a context sensitive grammar. So, therefore, it will be equivalent in that sense that it generates any string except by the linear modern automaton except for the string epsilon. Now, we will first show that if there is a C as a G, there is an equivalent linear modern automaton m accepting the same language generated by the grammar G. Now, clearly G is a structured grammar a special case of a structured grammar. Now, we will construct a Turing machine m equivalent to g in exactly the manner that was discussed earlier, except that earlier that in, in, the, in the context of showing that a Turing machine and structured grammar are equivalent. Although, you have shown that Turing machines and structured grammars are equivalent. In that context, whatever construction we used, we will use the same construction except that instead of multi tap consider it in a multi track. In such a case suppose w belongs to L of g then there is a derivation like this s derives w 1 w 1 derives w 2 eventually w n minus 1 derives w n which is equal to w. And in every step, since we are using the production rules of a con the context sensitive grammar, therefore, the length of s must be less than equal to length of w 1 because of the restriction that we have for context sensitive grammar and uh, the length of w 1 is greater than length of w n minus 1 and length of w n is basically w. Now, give the input w to the linear one automata in the form w within this left end marker and the right end marker. Since, each sensational form w i which is generated over various steps of m is not of length greater than w that greater than the length of the w m does not use any tap cells beyond the end marker. So, this is for sure because in, uh, in every step the length of w or w i is not greater than the length of the final string that will be generated. So, therefore, at in no step the Turing machine will use any cell towards the left side of the end marker or towards the left side of the left end marker or right side of the right end marker. Therefore, m behaves as a linear bound automat as a z. Therefore, m is an LBA which accepts the language generated by the CSG G. Let us now see the other direction. 
that means if there is an L B A M except in some language so L M there has to be an equivalent C A G G except accepting the same generating the same language and that is your L G that means L M equal to L G. Consider that the linear boundary automaton is M with the elements q sigma delta and q naught. We write sigma naught to be sigma minus these two symbols that means, sigma naught does not contain the two n markers. Now, construct a grammar which is a required context sensitive grammar from this L B A. We will see that T is the set of terminal symbols of sigma, whatever terminal symbols is there in sigma we will have in T and n is a set of non terminals. We have two special non, two non terminals S and A. Besides that we will use, use some composite symbols to represent the non terminals. The composite symbols are of the form A alpha is a pair basically within square bracket A alpha, where A is a terminal symbol and alpha is from this set C. So, it may be x for x in sigma 0 or it may contain <coughs> angular bracket left angular bracket then x or x left angular bracket or it may contain both angular bracket and x, x may be any symbol from sigma naught or it may contain some state symbol q, q belongs to capital Q and it may contain both state symbol and angular bracket along with this x. So, c may be any one from this set, uh, alpha may be any one from this set c and p consists of the set of production will consist of the following productions. We will now see what are production rules to be used. So, the first production rule says that S goes to capital A and then this composite symbol A A Q naught A comma A Q naught or S goes to the single symbol non terminal that is A comma within bracket within bracket A Q naught here A is a terminal symbol and this A for can generate this kind of strings a a a and a left bracket a. In fact, using this 1 and 2 we can generate the input string. Here once we generate a string using s and a the first component if we collect the first component from each of the composite symbols that will give us the exactly the input string and the second component basically represents the tap con component. And while deriving during derivation this grammar will simply simulate the moves of the Turing machine at linear one automaton m. Suppose that the automaton contains a move like this delta q x equal to p y in state q if it reaches a symbol x then it goes to state p and y y may be a print or y may be left left move or r y may be a right move. If y is a print from some, some, some symbol from input alphabet it prints then what is done if currently suppose the Turing machine or linear one automaton was reading symbol x it was in state q reading symbol x that is what given by this move. Then it simply sends its state from q to p and x is sends to y that means it prints a new symbol y and here z 1 and z 2 may be any symbol it may be epsilon or it may be left angular bracket or a right angular bracket. 
So, therefore, z 1 and z 2 will remain same. Now, if suppose the Turing machine or the linear model automaton in state q reading x goes to state p and it moves towards the right hand side, here is moves towards the right hand side that means y equal to r. In such a case, suppose this is a last this dependence this is the last symbol last non terminal in such a case this angular bracket will appear at the end. So, therefore, it will simply reading q reading terminal symbol x at state q it will simply go to the right side of the symbol x that means, it is now reading the right end marker p. Otherwise, if it is not the last symbol then there will be some other symbol towards the right hand side. So, it is in state q read symbol x then it will simply move over the symbol x that means, it will read the next symbol. Therefore, it will go to the go to read the symbol b. So, from a z q x next symbol is b b z s where z s may be any right angular bracket or epsilon it may be empty also. So, the state symbol q will move towards the right side to indicate that it is now reading the next symbol b. So, it is p b z s z s may be empty and here this z may be the left angular bracket or it may be empty as well. Similarly, you can see the move when it goes towards the left side these two are exactly similar to the previous two. And a special case when it is reading the left end marker it simply goes towards the right side it moves towards the right side. So, this is right side and it may change the state to p. So, a q left angular bracket a z it is reading the left end marker. So, there is no move towards the left side it has to move towards the right side. So, that it can now read the symbol a. Similarly, we can write the rule for when when the LBA is reading the right end marker in such a case of course, there will be no right move. So, it has to go towards the left side to read the symbol which is there towards the left of the right end marker. And finally, when the LBA enters in a state which is a halting state is H is a halting state then simply we reduce this composite symbol to A where A is the symbol that is there, there towards the right side and then from then onward we can reduce a, this combination some composite symbol and the terminal symbol to a b. So, a comma alpha b will be now a b taking the first terminal symbol and this is the terminal symbol. Similarly, b a alpha will be converted to b a. So, we see that each of our production is follows the rules of a context rules of context sensitive grammar that means, type 1 grammar. So, this grammar that we have constructed from the moves of the reading machine is exactly is a context sensitive grammar. Now, it is a routine verification as in the case of Turing machines that this grammar z generates the language except by the linear model automaton except for epsilon. Suppose, w is a string which is a 1 a, a 2 up to a n except by the automaton m. So, using rules 1 and 2 we can simply generate in a few steps square bracket a 1 comma left angular bracket a 1 then square bracket a 2 a 2 square bracket a 3 a 3 finally, square bracket a n comma a n q naught left angular bracket. You see that if you collect the first symbols from every composite symbol it constitutes the string a 1 a 2 up to a n which is the input string a 1 to a n. And then we can use the other symbols following the moves of the grammar we can use other rules of the grammar eventually to generate the string eventually this can be converted or transformed to 
d string. So, you can transform d string from s we will get the general d string eventually you can transform it to d string provided the Turing machine m accepts this particular string. That means, we can have we have some moves to accept this string by the linear variant automaton. We will illustrate this by an example say this is a linear variant automaton which generates or accepts all strings containing an A. Any string containing A will be accepted by this linear variant automaton which is shown in the table. The moves of the linear variant automaton is shown in the table. So, q 0, q 1, q 2 are the states of the linear variant automaton A, B are terminal symbols and left angular bracket and right angular bracket are two special symbols that we have as left hand marker and right hand marker. Here this capital A shows some arbitrary moves. You can choose anything there because that situation does not arise. Since Q naught in the star state, it always read the left right angular bracket. So, in such a case, we will enter in a state Q 1 and go to the left side because the string will be given like this a 1, a 2 up to say a n within this and we will be reading this left and marker at state q 0. So, therefore, first we have to move towards the le right left side that means, we will move towards this side and enter in state q 1. Now, we will be reading the symbol a n that is the first move and once we are there in the state q 1, we will keep on skipping the symbols until we see an a. Once we see an a, if at key 1 we see an a, we enter in the halting state and we move towards the right side or left side does not matter. But if we see any other symbol b, other symbol b, then we are in the same state key 1, but moves towards the left side. We keep, keep on keep skipping the symbols. But if we see the left angular bracket, then we enter in a state q 2 and move towards the right. And in q 2 again, if we see an a, we enter in an arbitrary state because that situation does not arise. Otherwise, we would have entered in a halting state earlier in the state q 1. And if in state q 2, we see a b, you enter in a state q 1 and move towards the left side. So, therefore, at that point, it will keep on oscillating. So, just consider a move of the Turing machine. It starts a input string is a b. Whether the Turing machine or did which is an LBA, whether it accepts a b or not. So, q naught a b these are two n markers currently reading this this indicates the currently reading symbol right angular bracket. So, in the next move following this one q 0 right angular bracket goes to q 1 l. So, it will enter instead q 1 and it will move towards left hand side head will move towards left hand side. So, it is now reading b. So, on q 1 b q 1 b it will again skip and move towards the left hand side the head move towards the left hand side state remains same. Now, q 1 a q 1 a it will enter in a halting state it will enter in a halting state it will move towards the right hand side. So, since now it does not enter in a halting state this string a b is accepted by the linear bounded automaton. Now, let us see whether this C S G which is constructed using the rules of the grammar generates the string a b or not. So, the if we apply the first rule, so S derives a b b q naught for every for all a belonging to T we have this kind of rule S derives a S goes to a small a a q naught is a rule we can apply and then this a goes to a a this rule can be used in the next step to terminate the non terminal a. So, once we have this we see that the first symbol a b represent the input string a b and the others the second part can be used to simulate the tap of the LBA. Now, 
this q 0 right angular bracket in this case it will simply move towards the left hand side following our rules of the move of the Turing machine q 0 right angular bracket it will move towards the left hand side. So, we will use the rules of the grammar corresponding rules of the grammar so is b q 0 and then q 1 b in this step since q 1 b we have this rule q 1 b it goes towards the left side. So, therefore, and it remains in the same state q 1. So, in this case so since there is no way to go here in the left side. So, this q 1 will move towards the left this symbol towards the left side composite symbol towards the left side. So, to have to read the symbol a that means it will be now left angular bracket q 1 a and similarly now q 1 a since we have the move q 1 a q 1 a is halting state and r. So, therefore, the corresponding rule in the grammar C S G will be according to the construction. So, q 1 a will go to the right side and will read now symbol b and will enter in the halting set. So, this will this will be a new situation. So, since it has entered in the halting set, so this now will reduce to b according to the rule this rule that we have So, according to the rule this rule of the context free condition grammar. So, whenever we have halting state it will reduce to the symbol that is there towards a which, which is a left component. So, therefore, in this case so this will reduce to b. So, that is what we have used over here and now b along with this now will reduce to a b. So, this is a b. So, therefore, s derives a b. So, this is how this corresponding grammar generates the strings. So, therefore, we have shown that context sensitive language, context sensitive grammar and linear bound automaton automata are equivalent. And the language generated by context sensitive grammar is said to be context sensitive language. Now, we will show that context sensitive language is properly contained within recursive language. First is so that every context sensitive language is recursive. Let L be a context sensitive language generated by the grammar connection grammar G. We will now construct an algorithm A which accepts L that is given any string w from sigma star a accepts w if and only if w belongs to the language l. So, it goes like this given w belongs to sigma star the algorithm performs the following steps. It constructs a graph whose vertices are the strings from n union sigma star whose length is less than or equal to w length is less than or equal to w. So, here the vertices represents the strings over n union sigma star, but the length must be less than or equal to the length of the string w. Now, for vertices say alpha and beta are vertices of the graph which can so we know that alpha there is beta in the grammar g if and only if there is an arc from alpha to beta. So, it is quite easy or you can easily see that alpha there is beta if on only if there is a arc there is an arc from alpha to beta. Now, know that the path in the graph represents derivations in g. Therefore, w belongs to L of g if and only if there is a path in the graph from vertex s to the vertex for w. So, if you can somehow find out a path from the vertex representing s to the vertex representing w, then we know that s derives w. Now, A simulates a method which finds a path from s to w if exist and there are algorithms you can do it easily to find out a path from one vertex to another vertex in a graph and it reports yes 
if there exists any such path to indicate that S derives W, that means W is generated by the grammar G. Otherwise, it says that no, it rejects it. So, therefore, we know that there exists such an algorithm, and hence every CSL can be shown to be recursive. Now, we will show that there is a recursive language that is not context, context sensitive. To show the proper containment, we will show that there is a recursive language that is not context sensitive. To show this, we will consider a binary encoding, binary encodings of all CSGs, context sensitive grammars. We will just consider some binary encoding. Suppose this G in angular bracket represents a binary encoding of a CSG G. Now, we define the language L like this. L is a set of all binary encodings of all the CSGs with G with bracket binary binary encodings of all the CSGs such as G is a CFG and this encoding is not accepted or not generated by the grammar G. Now, this L of course, it belongs to 0 1 star because this is a binary encoding. So, here G must be a CSG and this is the binary encoding and this is not accepted by or generated by the grammar G. This encoding does not belong to L G. Now, we will show that L is recursive, this language L is recursive, but it is not a context sensitive language. To show that L is recursive, if any input is given, say any W belongs to 0 1 star is given, we will check whether W defines a CSG. If it does not define a CFG, obviously W does not belong to L, that is quite clear. Now, if W defines a CSG G, then using the algorithm just we have described above, in the given the previous result, we decide whether or not W belongs to L of G. So, that we can always do by constructing graph and then looking for a path if there exists. So, therefore, we can show that L is recursive because you can decide whether or not W belongs to L G. Now, we show that L is not a context sensitive language. So, assume for contradiction that L is a context sensitive language, then there exists a context sensitive grammar so G dash such that L G dash equal to L. There must be some context sensitive grammar. Now, we pause a question whether the encoding of that grammar G dash belongs to L, there is a question that we ask. Suppose that this encoding belongs to L, then according to our definition that this encoding does not belong to L of G dash. So, therefore, this encoding does not belong to L. So, this is a contradiction that you have got. Similarly, if we assume that this encoding belongs to L, encoding of this grammar that we have assumed belongs to L, then since G dash is a CSG, then encoding of this belongs to L of G. That is, encoding of this belongs to L. Again, we have arrived at a contradiction by this argument. So, therefore, our original assumption that L is a CS, CSL must be wrong. So, therefore, such a grammar, connection grammar generating L does not exist. So, therefore, it is not context sensitive language. So, hence, L is a, there exists, L is a, C, L, is a L is recursive, but is not context sensitive. So, hence we have the following strict containment between the between the language classes. 
the class of context sensitive language is strictly contained in the class of recursive languages and hence we have got this hierarchy. In fact, we have some other classes like say, so first we have got this containment say regular language is properly contained within context free language, context sensitive language is properly contained and CFL is properly contained in the context sensitive language and CSS is properly contained within recursively enumerable language. So, in fact, we have some other classes for example, say DCFL determinacy context free language. So, regular language is properly contained within determinacy context free language that result also we have shown earlier. So, determinant context free language is proper subset of context free language context free language is proper subset of context sensitive language and context sensitive language is proper subset of recursive language and in fact, recursive language is proper subset of recursively enumerable language. So, this is a hierarchy which is called Homsky hierarchy. 